Hello, it's Willow here. Um, this is a little video I'm doing on puncturing corporate spin on GMO labeling. Okay, so we've had a number of big pronouncements from the major food corporations lately uh, that they are going to finally cave into public pressure and label the products that they're putting out that include genetically modified ingredients. Now, first, for anyone who doesn't understand what GMO or genetically modified means, it means that uh, genes that are not naturally found in a particular plant or seed are implanted in that plant or seed by scientists because of a certain trait that um, it gives that plant or seed, okay? And one of the major traits that it gives that plant or seed, one of the major traits that's being produced through uh, genetic modification is the ability to withstand huge amounts of chemical, okay? Huge amounts of chemical herbicide and chemical pesticide. So genetically modified seeds are actually being put out by chemical corporations. Uh, there are six major ones. Uh, let me see if I remember them off the, off the top of my head. Monsanto, of course, everyone knows Monsanto, but there's also uh, Dow, DuPont, Syngenta, Bayer, and BASF. Those are the six major corporations. Uh, and these are all corporations that uh, their main source of income is selling chemicals. And uh, they most of the uh, five of the six uh, of these corporations have long histories in the military industrial complex, okay, producing chemicals for chemical warfare and things of that nature. Okay, so we, number one, we have to look to who is telling us that these GMOs are perfectly safe for us to eat, okay? Is it perfectly safe for us to eat uh, plants that have been designed to withstand massive, massive doses of herbicide that would kill uh, any other plant that didn't have this genetic modification, okay? Anyway, We've had uh, recent pronouncements, you know, big fanfare, that Kellogg's, General Mills, and Campbell's have agreed to uh, label their the products that they put out that have genetically modified ingredients, which is pretty close to all of them. Let's, let's just put it that way. And I would go so far as to say it's all of them, and I'll tell you why. We also had a major announcement by Nestle Corporation that they were removing all of the genetically modified ingredients from six of their major ice cream brands. Um, and those ice cream brands include Skinny Cow, Nestle Drumstick, Nestle Ice Cream, um, Haagen-Dazs, Edie's, um, there's one more that I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, they, they had this huge uh, sort of, you know, corporate push, corporate press release out into the world that they are... Uh, eliminating GM ingredients. Okay, so the vast majority of the anti-GMO movement is pushing for labeling of GMO products, okay? So they see that this is the solution, this is the answer, this is how we're going to be able to differentiate between food products that have genetic, genetic modification and food products that don't. I'm here to tell you that that is not true. <laughs> that genetically, the GMO labeling is only partially effective and really is not, is not that huge of a step um, uh, at all. Let's, let's look at Nestle, for example, as, as our case study here. Okay, so Nestle has sa stated that it will remove GM ingredients. I'll, I'll actually read its... Um, I'll actually read the, the, the press release that Nestle put out. With a focus on simplifying ingredient lists while maintaining the same great tastes consumers have grown to love, the newest changes vary across more than 100 products, with examples including the removal of artificial color and flavors, high fructose corn syrup, and GMO ingredients. Okay, so again, as I'm saying, this is being applauded across, almost across the board by the major anti-GMO you know, groups and organizations. However, uh, this does not actually remove genetic modification from Nestle's products, and I will explain why. Okay, so uh, almost across the board these days, in the, current, in the conventional um, dairy system, in the conventional meat system, in the conventional agriculture system, livestock are being fed feed that is genetically modified. 
okay? Two of the major, uh, three of the major feeds for livestock are corn, alfalfa, and soy, okay? Um, and all of those are genetically modified uh, to almost across the board. Anything that's being uh, produced in the conventional agricultural system, so as opposed to the organic agricultural system, which is forbidden to use any organic or any uh, GMO feed, the conventional agricultural system, animals are being fed GMO feed. Okay? So that means that the milk that Nestle is using to produce its ice cream is genetically modified because the animals have been fed genetically modified feed, okay? Now, this is, this is where Nestle gets around, gets around things um, because it does not consider animal products that have, been, that have been produced with genetically modified feed as genetically modified ingredients, okay? Gene all it includes in its genetically modified ingredients um, label is ingredients that are knowingly produced with GMOs, okay, directly from a direct source. So for example, high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup is in, you know, almost every uh, processed goodie, processed food that we have out there, especially the, the sweet stuff like Nestle produces. And that is produced directly from genetically modified corn, okay? So Nestle's saying they will remove high fructose corn syrup that is made directly from genetically modified corn, but they are not sourcing milk that is truly non-GMO. Um, and this comes, from, this comes from the Nestle USA website, straight from the website. A question to them. Do you consider ingredients derived from animals fed with GMO feed to be GMO ingredients? Answer from Nestle. We do not consider ingredients derived from animals fed with GMO feed to be GMO ingredients. Question. Are GMO ingredients safe? Answer from Nestle. Foods made with GMO ingredients are as safe as foods made with ingredients from conventional crops. So there you have it. That's Nestle's true stance on the situation. Their true stance is that they'll, they'll get rid of the surface level GMOs, but they won't go right to the root of the matter. They won't go right to the heart of matter. And that is true, I would say, almost across the board with these uh, huge food corporations, okay? Huge processed food corporations. The other, the other problem with this idea that labeling will solve the problem, all we need to do is have uh, our, our products labeled, is that um, we have a situation where crops are being contaminated and seeds are being contaminated unknowingly and unintentionally, okay? So that means that even if someone plants a, a bag of seed that they believe is non-GMO, at this point, with the cross-contamination levels that we're dealing with, there is a very high chance that some of that seed will be GMO, okay? This, is, this situation is exacerbated hugely by the release of genetically modified alfalfa. Genetically modified alfalfa was released for commercial sale in the United States of America amidst huge protest, absolutely huge protest, in 2011. And it uh, very rapidly started contaminating the natural crop, okay? Um, now, alfalfa is, you, is hay. It's, it's hay bales. It's, it's feed for livestock, okay? And alfalfa is deeply embedded in the organic agriculture system. It's, it's, it's used as feed for livestock, and it's also used as fertilizer because it's a natural fertilizer. It's a nitrogen fixer in the soil. So they, they uh, use alfalfa to fertilize soil that is considered organic soil. They also use or, or, uh, alfalfa as the three-year transition crop when they're transitioning a farm from conventional agriculture, which uses chemicals, to organic agriculture, which uses non-chemical herbicides and pesticides, okay? So it's, it's, it's a foundation stone of the organic system. Now, uh, because there is this unintentional and unknown cross-contamination, uh, wait, let me back up. Okay, so alfalfa is a feral perennial plant. That means that it comes back year after year without being sown again, and it also basically grows and spreads like a weed, okay? It's very difficult if, if, 
alfalfa makes its way into your into your uh, field, it's very diffficult to get rid of it if you don't want it there, okay? It's very tenacious. And this is what has been this is what has been unleashed is the first ever feral perennial genetically modified plant. That's what's been unleashed in the United States in 2011. Um, and that is what's be also being released in Canada in test plots. So it genetically modified alfalfa has not been accepted for commercial release in Canada yet, but they're, they're, they're taking the steps to getting there. And it has been planted on Canadian soil in test plant in test plots since the spring of 2014. Okay. So it's, it, it's here as well in Canada where I am. Um, the situation with alfalfa. Okay. So because it spreads, grows and spreads like a weed, it grow it spreads with, through the air, through insects, you know, water, rain can spread the seeds around. Um, many, many different ways it, it can, it can spread. People aren't going to be aware that the natural crop has been contaminated and we're, you know, Alfalfa seeds are not going to respect the Canada-US border. Let's just put it that way. So if alfalfa, genetically modified alfalfa is being produced in states along the Canada-US border, which it is, it will easily migrate across, across that border and contaminate the Canadian supply. The test plots that are being grown in Canada are currently being grown in Ontario and Quebec, but of, of course, uh, alfalfa doesn't respect the provincial boundaries either, so it will be spreading east and it will be spreading west, contaminating the natural crop. Um, the first documented case of of uh, uh, unwanted GM alfalfa contamination occurred in 2013. So it was grown and it started being grown in 2011. That was the very first year that it was grown in the U.S. Already two years later, um, it was contaminating the natural crop. There was a farmer in Washington state in the United States who had his natural alfalfa crop rejected for export because it was found to be contaminated with GMOs. And most overseas countries, especially Europe, will not accept genetically modified ingredients. Okay. Canada and the U S are two of the, you know, only major country, like only big countries that are allow it, you know, that are allowing this stuff. Um, the Washington farmer complained to the United States Department of Agriculture about his crop being unintentionally contaminated and the USDA responded with an it's not our problem stance and basically said that even though they were the ones that, uh, that uh, um, approved GM alfalfa unconditionally in 2011, it was the US government under Tom Vilsack, Iowa Senator, uh, sorry, Iowa governor from the Corn Belt, right? GMO Corn Belt is where, is where that guy came from. Um, he was they that farmer was told you're gonna have to sue Monsanto to recoup those those costs okay um, in October 2014 China slammed its doors to US hay alfalfa hay imports because they were found to be contaminated with genetically modified alfalfa okay so this is this these are um, alfalfa farmers who are not planting GM alfalfa GM alfalfa is uh, finding its way into their natural crops and ruining their crops, ruining their crops. Okay. So as you can understand, right, as you can understand the spread of this stuff, uh, it has the ability to effectively make, make it so that there is no such thing as organic soil anymore. There is no such thing as organic dairy, organic meat, organic, you know, anything that is involved, that is, has been touched with, uh, alfalfa because we can't, guarantee that um that the natural alfalfa crop hasn't been contaminated with genetically modified alfalfa okay so this is a huge issue that that we need to we need to really um you know be aware of and be vocal about because this has the ability genetically modified alfalfa has the ability to contaminate our food supply almost across the board. Okay. Almost across the board. It, it will, it could make it so that again, there is no such thing there. You really can't guarantee that there's any such thing as organic soil anymore. There's no such thing as, you know, um, an organic hay crop, a hay crop that is non GMO, you know, as far, as far as alfalfa go, goes, there's other forms of hay that you can feed, um, 
you know, feed grass and, and such, but alfalfa makes its way into that grass as well, right? Alfalfa is generally mixed in with, with grass. So anyway, uh, this, is, this is the point that we absolutely must hammer home. There is a huge sort of anti-GMO cheerleader movement right now. And all they seem to be focusing on is GMO labeling. And every time a corporation rolls out this big pronouncement about how they're going to label GMOs, uh, this anti-GMO cheerleader movement buys it hook, line, and sinker, buys it at the surface level. Well, we have to be digging much deeper than the surface level if we really want to understand the situation, if we really want to understand the extent of um, genetically modified contamination, and particularly the big issue that we're dealing with, which is the unknown and the undesired uh, unintentional contamination of crops. I will, I will just uh, end with a one point here that even countries that are banning GMOs are finding that GMOs are finding their way onto their soil. Even countries that have said, no, we don't want those, we won't accept those, keep those out of our country. Switzerland, for example, is one of those countries. It's an anti-GMO country. It does not import GMOs. It doesn't plant GMOs. But there were four documented instances of genetically modified canola growing in Switzerland. Okay, and this is the problem because anywhere that canola seed is transported, um, because the canola seed has been contaminated by GMOs, even the non-GMO canola seed, right? Even the organic canola seed has been contaminated uh, at this point. So even using legal channels and saying, keep, keep this out, that's not enough at this point either, okay? So you, we have to understand that the anti-GMO rhetoric, that labeling food products is going to solve the problem, that banning GMOs from our country is going to solve the problem, that's not true. That's not fully effective, okay? And we have to be, you know, it, it's, it's um, a situation where we have to be looking at the nitty-gritty details on this and, um, and really holding these corporate, you know, agenda makers and these corporate PR people and this corporate spin accountable for the true situation, okay? Ultimately, processed food is not good for you, okay? So even if uh, Campbell's and Kellogg's and General Mill label their GMO products, they're still putting GMO products out for us. Even if Nestle uh, half-assed removes some of the GMO ingredients, you know, even if they removed all of the GMO ingredients, their products would still be, I would suggest, um, not the most healthful products to eat, okay? So we have to be looking at actually eliminating processed foods from our diets entirely. We have to be looking at um, avoiding products that are made with corn, soy, canola, unfortunately, alfalfa, which is pretty much everything, um, you know, wherever we can to, to sort of safeguard, safeguard our diets as much as we can. Buying organic or up to organic standards remains the best bet for eliminating GMOs from your diet. But again, with the, the cross-contamination, especially of the alfalfa crop, we can't even guarantee that uh, a product that is labeled organic will truly be GMO free. Unfortunately, that's the situation. Uh, don't, be dis don't be disheartened. Um, just be smart. Be smarter. We can outsmart these people and we can turn the tide because the majority of people understands that GMOs are not the most healthful foods to be putting in our bodies.